Okay, welcome to my talk, uh, Bridging Worlds. Uh, we're going to talk about connecting Linux to Azure Enter ID, or formerly known as Azure Active Directory. It's essentially an OAuth provider in the Azure cloud. Um, this is the agenda. If we get through everything, I had 45 minutes the last time I gave this talk, and I got almost through, so we're not going to get it done. <laughs> But I'm going to start off with showing you what Windows does, because not everyone here uses Windows. Um, I'll show you, I just recorded it, uh, a little demo this morning, show you how it's done in Windows, and then I'm going to show you live, if it works, um, how it's done on Tumbleweed. So when you first log into a new machine in Windows, they have you authenticate. And right now it's enrolling in the Azure cloud. I authenticated to Azure just then. And this is a really slow process. It doesn't take any more than about two minutes, so, but Microsoft is slow, so give them a minute. <laughs> I tried to clip out the middle portion, but then OpenShot kept crashing on me. So we're not doing that today. But it just enrolled in the domain, and when it finishes checking for updates here and setting up, then you're going to see it's going to prompt for a Windows Hello pin. And a Windows Hello pin is a TPM bound authentication code that unlocks a RSA key that lets you authenticate using multi-factor multi authentication. It treats your device as a second factor of authentication when authenticating to the Azure uh, OAuth 2 cloud. Just a moment, it'll show the. <laughs> We're much faster than this, you'll see. <laughs> there you go. You notice that it enrolled before it checked for MFA? <laughs> I have a authenticator app set up as my multi-factor authentication for this user. And now you're creating a hello pin. Again, that's a TPM bound auth code, if you're familiar with how the TPM works. And then that's basically it. And you're signed in. OK, now let's see how we do it in Tumbleweed. So here we have our, whoop. Oh, we have the wrong screen, that's what we have. I need to mirror it, huh? Well, maybe I'll just move it over here. It's gonna be a little tricky for the demo. Okay, so we have our GDM login screen. Pick an unlisted user. Himmelblau is the name of a project. It's already configured in the background. Now, the configuration is just so that we've, we essentially lock it. Um, it only will authenticate to specific domains and users. Um, Microsoft, on the other hand, well, we thought this was stupid, so we didn't do this. Microsoft lets you authenticate to any domain in the cloud, anywhere, uh, the first time you set up your machine. And so we, we have it configured so you have to select a specific dom a domain and authorize it. And it's prompting for an MFA code. I've got it here. Hopefully I didn't fat finger that. And it's enrolling right now, just like you saw Windows do. It takes about 10 or 15 seconds at the most, typically. It's a little bit faster in the US because I'm closer to the servers. if it's going to work. <laughs> so I tested this out this morning. I've tried it a couple of times since getting here. And uh, this morning, the Azure servers went down for about 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that was great. And maybe it just did again. OK. Well, that's fun. That's what I get for doing a live demo. But I recorded it. I 
I did think ahead about this. Uh, I think it just locked up because the um, because Azure isn't responding. Oh, where's my mouse? Um, oh gosh, there it is. I honestly can't find my mouse. Is it possible? Oh, come on. Here, this is better. Now I can actually see it, so let's just play that. And we don't need the audio from the video, that's just fine. Let me actually forget this, let's speed it up. We don't need to watch it in slow motion. There we go. You can see me talking there. <laughs> okay, so now let's watch it actually work. <laughs> so this is what it's supposed to do. Log in, enter your password, enter the authentication code, like I showed you a minute ago when it froze. And now, it enrolled, that was quick. Of course, I'm playing it double time, but yeah. I, I recorded that in the US and it worked flawlessly, and it took about 10 seconds. <laughs> and there we go. It's enrolled, you've set up, logged in for the first time. Who am I doesn't work. <laughs> the first time, I don't know why. But it, you're, NSS is responding, you can see in who am I works the second time. I don't know why that happened. But now, you're enrolled in Windows Hello, so you type in your Windows Hello pin and it can, you can lock it and unlock it without having to enter MFA credentials, but you actually do have an MFA um, authorized token because your physical hardware counts as multi-factor authentication. Now I'm gonna log it in using another user. It is not going to re-enroll because it's already enrolled in the domain, but it's authenticating as a different user on the same domain, and so it's gonna enroll a new um, Windows Hello token, but not re-enroll the device. See, you can see that works as well. NSS is working. You can lock it, unlock it. Now, the next thing I try is plugging in garbage for the password. And I also tried plugging in the actual password for that user. Doesn't work. It will only accept the um, that TPM pin for unlocking the the token or the RSA key in the TPM. And then the next time you log in with one of those users, all you have to do is enter that TPM key, and that's the end of that demo. Which, fortunately, I recorded. All right. So now I'm gonna talk about some of the, the details behind it. Um, I'll start by just a basic introduction and then we're gonna dive into some of the ugly details, which if you get lost, that's okay. Most people in, in, in Samba are still lost trying to follow this stuff. Okay, so the basic SAML Blau is meant to be an interoperability suite for Azure and Intune. Intune is their policy enforcement, their mobile device um, uh, enforcement and Azure AD is their authentication. Um, it lets us authenticate on Linux for Azure AD. We're providing PAM and NSS module and they talk to a daemon in the background. Um, and then the goal is to in enforce those Intune MDM policies, but that's not implemented yet. And I'll explain why later. Um, if you've heard of Ubuntu's AAD auth, this is supposed to be the same thing um, but I don't recommend you use it. They have uh, backported this tool to all of their, their stable enterprise distributions, and they have a huge number of bug reports, and they are not fixing them. But 
Ubuntu was the first one to the scene, so they made a big deal out of, uh, out of this, that they, they beat us all to the, to the uh, punch. But it doesn't work very well. It does not enroll the device. It requires explicit client application configuration in Azure. It's an extra, fairly complicated step that has to be done. Whereas our, our code um, uses the, the, the Windows behavior and doesn't need that. Um, ADD auth does not perform MFA. In fact, it gets a MFA demand from Azure and Ubuntu's code explicitly rejects it, ignores it, and lets the user in without an authentication, without a valid authentication. Um, they don't use the TPM in their code. They rely on, actually, on some Microsoft libraries, um, which doesn't offer MFA or device enrollment, and which is why they have to bypass the MFA. Um, also, the project appears to be abandoned. Uh, they made a big deal about the release and then they stopped developing it. Um, they're not responding to bug requests. They're not responding to pull requests. Last non-bot update was last October. And um, I was working with them and communicating with them about collaboration on the project and they stopped communicating about the same time they dropped the, the project and stopped supporting it. But it's still in their enterprise di distribution. On the flip side, this is why we decided to go our own way and build our own tool so that we could have device enrollment and Windows Hello authentication. Um, there's no Azure configuration necessary. We have MFA. We communicate with the TPM. We uh, TPM bind all of the keys to secure them. Um, there's no Microsoft code dependencies. It's all written in-house. Uh, and um, we're collaborating closely with the Samba and SSSD teams. And it's written in Rust. And in short, we make with the Windows behavior, which is the goal of the Samba project. So kind of the significance of all this, um, some significant points, Microsoft is not cooperating. Um, they provided some documentation. In fact, they began documenting the protocols and then stopped. And it's pretty obvious that they, they, they stopped um, on purpose. And in communications with them, they have, um, They've uh, chosen not to update the specifications, which are mostly incorrect. Uh, Microsoft has inst instead decided to provide proprietary Linux binaries that they expect people to install. Um, and their binaries have some problems. They, they, they're lacking integration. They don't provide an NSS or PAM um, uh, uh, modules because um, they just bind the authentication to a local user. And so the experience for Linux users is subpar compared to a Windows user in, their, in Azure. Obviously, the community would prefer an open solution rather than installing proprietary Microsoft code. So let's dive into the details. Enrollment. Enrollment's kind of a complicated process. It required a lot of digging to try to figure out how it works since it's not documented. Um, most of the documentation details that they, the Microsoft did provide were incorrect. There were a few pieces that were slightly correct. <laughs> so you have to acquire a special enrollment token. This special enrollment to token is, is kind of blessed to be able to do um, various things that a regular token is not permitted to do. There's nothing fancy about this token. It's just you tell it what you're authenticating to and it gives you a special token that gives you extra privileges. Um, then we generate a TPM, TPM bound um, device keys and um, certificate signing key. Um, and we do endpoint discovery. That's a special uh, API call that we make to Microsoft to say, who am I supposed to talk to when I want to authenticate? Uh, and then we send the request to uh, what's called the Azure DRS service, which is returned by the, Azure, the endpoint discovery. The Azure DRS service in, in return writes a device object to Azure AD and returns a device certificate to us, which we need in order to be able to sign and um, authenticate our, uh, our future requests. After that's all done, um, we send an MDM enrollment request. This is not implemented. Again, I will explain why in a moment. Um, Here's a QR code for uh, a specification that I wrote that explains how this enrollment works because Microsoft's documentation is wrong. Uh, it's based on MSDVRJ and MSDVRD. Not really important there, but 
Those are the incorrect Microsoft protocols. Uh, the only real requirement when authenticating to enroll is that you use this particular resource. Um, and then we support various types of authentication. Um, theoretically, all of Microsoft's uh, uh, authentication, MFA authentication methods work. I haven't tried each one, but uh, it's supposed to work. Um, and as long as you authenticate this way and use MFA during the enrollment, then your Windows Hello token will grant you MFA when you authenticate with your Hello pin. This is what an enrollment request looks like. It's just a JSON request to a particular endpoint, um, providing that uh, the uh, the access or the authentication code in the um, authentication token in the header, and you get back a response that looks like this, which is mostly nonsense. Honestly, um, we get the, the certificate part is 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 relevant. It's important. The rest of it, um, Microsoft's documentation, which is mostly incorrect in this place, it says ignore all that. It's useless. I don't know why it's in there. And it's basically just garbage uh, data. I don't know why they put it in there. OK, so the Intune enrollment. I'm trying to work on this. And the problems I'm encountering is that Microsoft actually heavily documents how you enroll a Windows device in Intune, which is their policy enforcement. The, the, the documentation for that is correct. Windows documentation is correct. But there's a specific field that says, what type of dev device are you joining? And the options are Windows and um, Windows Phone, <laughs> which doesn't even exist anymore. I tried um, entering in various options in there. The documentation says it only supports those two. I tried plugging in different things, and it nothing works. It will only accept Windows and Windows Phone. Um, I uh, did some searching. I, I uh, looked through the debug of Microsoft's um, Linux binaries and found that it's talking to a different endpoint. So to do the exact same procedure, we talked to a completely different endpoint, and I discovered that on all of the different devices, each one talks to a different endpoint and uses a different protocol. So Mac OS uses a completely different endpoint and a completely different um, method of communication. So does Android, so does iOS. Mac OS and iOS don't communicate the same way to enroll. So this is, this is brilliant. Thank you, Microsoft. But I discovered that I, I'm supposed to talk to a specific Linux enrollment endpoint and that I need to use JSON while uh, the Windows one uses SOAP. Uh, the SOAP is ugly. I decided not to show it here, but it's, it's a giant ugly blob. Um, so I've been sending random requests to this, trying to uh, figure out what it expects, and I, I can't figure it out yet. I'm, I don't know what uh, parameters it's expecting. My, my next attempt, I think I'll probably fuzz it. Microsoft will love that. OK. Uh, authentication, this is, uh, he, here's how we uh, go through an authentication process. I'm not going to delve into those details. The only important thing, again, is that there's, um, uh, oh, here's what I wanted to talk about here. So the, um, the, the, maybe the important thing, I don't know if you noticed, but when we authenticated it on Windows at the beginning, it was not a graphical GUI window. Uh, it wasn't maybe very clear. You want to notice the little scroll bar on the side? It was a browser embedded in the login window. Microsoft expects us and demands that we use a browser window. Um, we don't have a browser window in GDM. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> but actually, uh, Red Hat has been working with the GDM team on adding it, so uh, because SSSD is trying to solve the same problem, because their um, services require the same thing, and they're trying to get Azure AD working, because they want MFA also. So I came up with another solution. I am currently emulating the browser be behavior through um, web post and get requests. <laughs> it's working. That's what, uh, what you saw earlier. Um, now, the problem is that that will break if Microsoft alters the login process, which I happen to know they're about to do because there's a CVE in, CVE in there that I reported. <laughs> OK. So an alternative approach is to use a device, a, a device authorization grant, or a DAG, which is, you've probably seen this when you've authenticated a, a smart TV. 
and it pops up and says, go to this URL and enter this code. That is an alternative. A couple of drawbacks with that. Um, we can't force MFA when we do that. And so we don't know if we got an MFA token back, so we don't know if our Windows Hello token will have MFA. Well, we'll know once we get it back and it says, you don't have MFA. But we can't force it to have MFA if we don't, if we use the DAG. Additional drawback is that it can be disabled by the administrator in Azure, and Microsoft actually advises that they disable it. So that's a problem. Because if uh, Microsoft is telling our customers, you need to turn this off, and then we're saying, you need to turn it back on so that this works, they're not going to be too happy. Uh, our, my current library that I've written supports DAG. It works. Um, and Himmelblau is using it as a fallback. Um, Next thing to cover is a primary refresh token. I won't go much into detail on this, but a primary refresh token is a, is a special fancy token that lets you get access tokens so that you can um, have a single sign-on into your browser, for example. Or, uh, but it also has a cool feature in here. It has TGTs in it, Kerberos TGTs. It has a on-prem TGT if you're synchronized with a on-prem Active Directory, and it has a TGT cloud, which lets you authenticate to services in Azure, in Azure using Kerberos. Um, and this is how you'd request a PRT, primary fresh token. Well, we don't need to go through that right now. Windows Hello, uh, that's a complicated process. Um, now Windows Hello, we're binding it to a, to a PIN authentication code, but we don't have to. You can bind it to a fingerprint, et cetera. I haven't set that up yet. Um, I'm not going to go all the way through this because we're almost out of time. Uh, that's instructions on how you do it. And again, I'm just going to skip past that. Um, PRT encapsulates, encapsulates the TGT. Uh, we need to import these into the cred cache. I haven't done that yet. That's what one of the TGTs looks like. Next step, we want to get Windows Hello working with the fingerprint reader. That way, a user can just walk up Swipe their fingerprint, logs them in. Um, we want to get a QR code for the DAG working uh, in the GDM. That is in progress. There's actually some sample code out there. SSSD has been working on that. Uh, we'll implement that when it's, when it's in GDM. Um, we want to get enrollment, in tune enrollment and policy application working. I'll use Augius to enforce policy. Uh, Windbind integration, that's an important step. So this is all meant to be kind of a um, staging ground to get to, so that we can learn how all of this works and we can get something to our customers, get something in Tumbleweed. But the goal is to actually integrate this into WinBind and it's a work in progress. We need to do proper ID mapping or is something that I, I wanted to bring up here and see if anybody had any ideas. Can we increase the size of the UID and GID in the kernel? And how ugly would that be? I don't know. I wasn't there around when, uh, or involved in the discussions when the UID and GID were increased from 16-bit to 32-bit, but I'm proposing we increase it to 128 bits. Because 128 bits will hold a UUID, which is the size of an Azure object ID, but it's not just necessary for Azure. All of the OAuth2, OAuth2 cloud providers, Google, Azure, our own Connie DM, if you're familiar with William Brown's project, all of them provide a UUID, 128 bits, for the um, object ID for the user. And if we could just shove that into the UUID and GID slots, that would be awesome. OK. Next thing is browser single sign-on. Uh, we need to get WebAuthn platform API working. There's a, um, a project out there for that. And it needs to be added to Firefox. Um, we're in discussions about that. Uh, I was going to do one final demo, but that's not happening. So any questions? Enzo. Hey. Uh, are the TPM stuff you saved just uh, like a fancy security, or uh, does Microsoft require it for, for example, Intune uh, verification for something? Uh, Microsoft enforces it on their hard, or on, in their software but it's not required per se by the protocol. Okay. The, it is optional to, to, um, to attest 
that you've used the TPM, but Microsoft currently has it optional. Okay, another question. Uh, you doesn't seem to, to need Intune, right? I mean, you can already authenticate mm -hmm. to the no domain, and then I believe you can access any domain resources um, once no. you're logged in. Not all domain resources. So, well, and it's sort of. So, um, and I, I, I wrote up some hacky scripts for that that very thing because I can't enroll in Tune. I noticed that once I'm authenticated, I can just look into the database and say, "Oh, here's the policies." And that's an alternative, but I would like to be able to enforce the policies correctly, which is you send this in tune enrollment, and then you uh, you ping in tune uh, in a separate daemon, and it and it gives you um, policies. And the policies are, for example, encrypting the hard drive. Um, you get you get actually extra access on your host in your uh, with your access token. You get special privileges, th things you can get access to if you um, obey the policy rules, like in encrypting your hard drive or um, having, um, oh, I, I don't know, uh, uh, only having a certain browser on your device or something. You know, the, the, eh, there's actually another alternative. You can just, uh, Microsoft doesn't really enforce this. You can just send a message that says, we're compliant. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then they give you the special access. That's all it takes. Uh, uh, it's just telling them, yeah, we're compliant. Okay, uh, any other questions? All right, we're out of time. Thanks. <laughs>